Now, first alert weather with meteorologist Tyler Jankowski. Before we get to the snow, I want to briefly enjoy the sun here. This is the view from Jericho looking over Mount Mansfield. Looks like it could use some fresh snow and we will get it tomorrow, later tomorrow night into Wednesday. There's the State House in Montpelier. We also have Grafton County, New Hampshire. Blue sky for all teens to the north, 20s to the south. That is the review for today. It's pretty simple. Overnight, though, it will be cold. A lot of us below zero, especially the Adirondacks and Northeast Kingdom, close to zero right in the Champlain Valley. The clouds come in by first thing tomorrow morning, but it will not be snowing tomorrow morning. This winter storm warning is for tomorrow afternoon through tomorrow night into the day Wednesday when most of the snow will fall. So storm tracker is clear. But there is the storm over the middle part of the country. Mostly rain for now, some flash flooding there also showing up. So that's an indication there's a lot of moisture. And for us, it will be snow and a little sleep. It begins around noontime for southern Vermont tomorrow and then works to the north in time for the evening commute. There will be some sleet as well tomorrow night, but I don't think that's going to be a significant part of this storm. It'll just be a couple hours of sleet for some of us, and that'll result in a widespread 6 to 12 inches of snow. So this is 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. There's the leading edge, basically from Malone to Burlington, Montpelier to Lebanon. That's where the edge will be. So most of us or more than 50% of the region seeing snow for the evening commute. The only exception is far northeastern Vermont, but even Newport and St. Jay gets covered in by say 8 o'clock tomorrow evening and then it's heavy snow that in terms of intensity. The consistency will be dry for most of us, but it will be a little bit of a wetter snow with the sleet in southern Vermont. That will be the only part of the region that sees a wetter, heavier consistency and the snow will still be falling hard for the Wednesday morning commute into we'll say mid morning. This is 10 a.m. on Wednesday, still a band of snow moving through and then for Wednesday afternoon, it's just leftover snow showers. So in terms of how much it's a widespread 6 to 12 inches. And as we've been saying since last night, we do think a lot of towns will push the upper limit of the range. So like 10, 11, 12 inches. And the best chance for a foot or just above a foot will be in northern New York, especially the Seaway Valley up through about Malone. Plattsburgh should come in close to a foot by Wednesday morning. So it is a big one. And in terms of commute breakdown, there's no concern tomorrow morning, but it's high for tomorrow evening. Wednesday morning, we'll put it at low just because there'll still be cleanup ongoing for later Wednesday and a couple flakes in the air, but nothing big. Now, wind is the other aspect. I don't think it's going to be at a level that causes damage, and especially because the dry will be snow, that won't be a big problem. But just know it will be gusty later tomorrow, 30 to 40 miles per hour, especially in the higher elevations. And then the wind diminishes pretty quickly for Wednesday morning. So the red color here is for the high impact later tomorrow. There won't be a problem tomorrow morning. It's tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening into very early on Wednesday. And look at the high on uh, Wednesday, I should say 32. So that means once you start to clear the snow away, a lot of driveways and roads start to turn wet. I'd think by later Wednesday, so that'll be helpful. It won't be bitter cold on Wednesday. And then for Valentine's Day on Thursday, it's dry with some flurries, potentially 32 the high. There is a second system in the forecast, but that one is more on the wet side, mainly rain, especially late Friday into Saturday as temperatures rise above freezing. So it's not a great start to President's Day weekend, but it certainly looks better by Sunday and Monday for the upcoming weekend. Alice? Heart disease is the number one killer in men and women, but many people still fail to recognize the risk factors for a heart attack. Haley Hernandez shares more about this major problem that's killing so many Americans. Would you get this right? Which of these foods have the most cholesterol? The answer, ice cream. Or do you know what really causes a heart attack? It's when a blood clot forms over a plaque lesion. These are a few of the questions on MDVIP that the majority of people get wrong. And that's where doctors say we have a major problem because it's killing us. The heart's a motor, and when that motor is hurt, it's hard to make the motor run pretty hard. 
Cardiologist Jonathan Aliota from Kelsey Siebold Clinic says patients don't recognize inconspicuous signs of a heart attack. In other words, he says if it doesn't feel like an elephant sitting on their chest, they might ignore it. This is especially true for women. According to MDVIP, a small 26% of women are aware that females have a lower chance of surviving a first heart attack compared to males. Women have more atypical features when they have a heart attack. I think people read this and they start to worry when they have left arm pain, which is a traditional sign, or um, left hand tingling. However, what we always encourage people to think about is we want to look for symptoms that happen with activity. So symptoms that occur when you're walking upstairs or walking through the grocery store, or exercising. You're watching NBC5 News at noon. We'll be right back.